everybody. I'm back once again to talk about my book, Prosperity Planning God's Way. And today I'm going to be talking about asset protection. So don't forget to hit the like, like subscribe, and share buttons. Here we go. So now that your soil is fertile and you are in right relationship with God, you are saved, you are a believer, and your land has been cultivated, you are treating your brother right, living the, a right Christian life, doing the things that you need to do to build your Christian walk, you're studying your word, you're paying your tithes, you're praying to God. Um, any barriers to your progress have been eliminated and you're now ready for God's promised spring and or harvest or autumn rainy season. And you're now ready for the ground to yield its crops and for the trees of the field their fruit. You're ready. Now, once the barriers have been removed, we will be so blessed that we may not even need to water our seeds because the land which God has given us is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. The Lord, our God, cares for our crop. And his eyes are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. In fact, God is able to understand our climate, help us to know the different varieties to plant. God is able to teach us to grow in cold and hot weather. And he is able to help us maintain our soil so that we will be able to grow fresh fruit all year long. <coughs> Excuse me. And no, that's not COVID. <coughs> now, if we want our crop to continue to yield ripe, sweet, and plentiful fruit, even beyond harvesting season, and all year long, we must be careful to protect our crops from pesky, devouring, bad thoughts, words, and habits, which lead to bad character and ultimately to compromise destinies. Now, these devouring characteristics include disobedience, ill-gotten gain, debt, lack of savings, and lack of sharing with others. I'm going to say it again. These devouring characteristics, these characteristics that will devour your assets, that will cause God to take them away, remove them, not even let them grow, are disobedience, going against his will, not even planting or harvesting the type of fruit that he told you to do, in in the right season. He's he's not going to let that prosper. Also, ill-gotten gain. You're going around trying to screw everybody else over. You're not going to prosper. You may prosper, but God will take it away. Um, debt. Being in debt. It's not God's will for you to be in debt. Uh, lack of savings. No, he expects you to share with others as well, okay? He expects you to um, save and he expects you to share. Let's talk about disobedience. Because his promises are always attached to us doing something in order that our lives will be fulfilled, we must faithfully obey God's commands to love and serve him with all our heart and soul. When we do this, he sends rain on our land in its season so that we may gather in our harvest. We must always be careful that we will not be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. If we idolize anything but him, 
he will cause our harvest to fail. Now, there are several ways in which our harvest fell through our disobedience. First of all, God might prevent our crops from growing. He'll take our harvest away from us before our seeds even take root. Because of his anger toward us, he will shut down the heavens and turn rain into dust and powder. Or God might decide to cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. Sure, he'll let give you branches. He'll let your seed take root. But guess what? He'll prune it. He'll cut it off to stop the growth. He'll let you see those nice tender vines, but then he'll cut them off. Number three, he'll prevent fruit from even growing on your tree, causing the leaves to wither and what he has given us to be taken back from us. Oh yes, those leaves will be so green and tender but then they'll wither, okay? And that's what God will do when we are disobedient and going against his will for our lives. He'll also, um, he'll also punish us for ill-gotten gain. So in addition to loving and serving God, we are not to reap our harvest through ill-gotten gain. That means dishonest scales, cheating, violence, lying, deceiving people, buy one, get one. If you do this and this and this and this and this. Buy one, get one. After you do this and this and this and this and this. We all know the game. Otherwise, we will eat but not be satisfied. Store up but save nothing. And plant but not harvest. So we do not want to operate off of ill-gotten gain. We already know that. Also, debt. Because the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender, the Lord wants us to be rich so that we will rule over many nations and that none will rule over us. He desires that we would be lenders, not expecting repayment, yet not turning away from those who want to borrow from us, even those who are wicked and will not repay us if they need to borrow from us. When they do not repay us, we may require payment from them, taking them to court, for example. But if other believers do not repay us, we must cancel any debt they owe us, just as God, our Father, has canceled the debt that we owe him and allow God and not man to judge between us and them. So in other words, we take the world to the world and we take the Christian to God, okay? We take the world to the world if we want to. We can put the world in God's hands too, but God allows us to take the world to the world or to court. He wants us to trust him. The one who opens the heavens to send rain in our land in season and blesses all the work of our hands as our source and not man and refrain from borrowing from anyone. He doesn't want you to borrow from anyone. So if you get in the situation where you feel like you need to borrow because you know that that's not God's will, I'm not telling you not to borrow, but I am telling you to make sure that you consult with him because he may have another option for you because he doesn't want you to borrow. So if he doesn't want you to borrow, he must have another option for you. Maybe, or maybe it's his permissive will that you do go ahead and borrow, but definitely consult with him. It's not his perfect will that you borrow. 
If we do have outstanding debt, however, we are to repay as promised. That is a promise. That's your word. You can't go against your word. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, you got to do it. Giving everyone and everything that we owe them. That includes our taxes. So to the IRS, other revenue, whatever we owe them. If we owe them respect and honor, give them that. Uh, lest our debt debtors suddenly arise, wake up and make us tremble. We don't want anybody scaring us, threatening us. Then we will become their victim and they will strip us of our harvest. I remember a time where I owed my creditors and they were calling my home and I was so scared. Oh my God, they're calling, they're calling, they're calling. Oh my God. Guess what? I decided, oh Lord, oh well, put it in the Lord's hands. I quit answering my phone because I'm not going to put myself through it. If the Lord did not provide me with what I needed to pay you, then I'm sorry. That's between uh, you and my Lord, really. I mean, I know it's between me and you because I signed the contract, but I'm dependent on God. So God knows what I owe you. He didn't give it to me, so there must be a reason. And um, I'm sure you're going to get your money, so um, just wait on the Lord. <laughs> so, lack of savings. In addition to not repaying our debts, we also strip ourselves of a harvest when we do not gather our crops and store our provisions in the summer as even the ants do, who are creatures of little strength. So if the ants are wise enough to know that they need to store up a little something extra when they got a little something extra, then how much wiser should we be? And if they're strong enough to be able to do it, how much stronger are we? When we are wise to put some of our summer fruit in storage jars for ourselves, our children and our children's children, we lay up treasure as a firm foundation for the things that are to come. Not only harvest, but also seed time. What you gonna do? What you gonna eat during seed time? Not only heat, but also cold. How you gonna stay? How you gonna stay warm in the cold? How you gonna stay cold in the heat? Not only summer, but also winter, and not only day, but also night. You gotta be able to see at day and night. Other things that are sure to come in all of our lives, the righteous and the unrighteous, are sunshine, rain, and death. We have to prepare for those things because they are sure to come. We must therefore not only store up some of the treasures of our harvest, but also because in God entrusted it with us, we must gain more from it. Not just store it up, but gain more from it or get a good return on our investment. So that when seed time, cold, winter, rain, night, and day come, and death, not only will we be able to eat, drink, and rejoice while others go hungry, thirsty, and are put to shame, but so will our children and grandchildren. That's our responsibility to make it possible for us to prosper and our children and our grandchildren to always prosper, no matter what the season. That's our responsibility. Failure to share with others. When the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. We are to use our worldly wealth to gain friends for ourselves so that we may be in a position to do good for others. Though we may be powerful and honorable, owning land and living on it, if we do not give water to the weary and food to the hungry, but send widows away empty-handed and break the strength of the fatherless, snares will be all around us. Therefore, when we reap the harvest of our land, we must not reap to the very edges of our field or gather the gleanings of our harvest. 
When we harvest the grapes in our vineyard, we must not go over the vines again. Don't be so stingy. Don't be so selfish. Leave something for others. Give, please, as you go. But leave what remains for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. Don't just think about yourself. If we do not leave some of our harvest, the hungry will consume it, taking it even from the among the thorns, and the thirsty will pant after our wealth. Don't leave people panting after your wealth. I went to Mexico and I was getting ready to leave an area. I was on a bus tour, I was getting ready to leave an area. As I was shopping around Mexico and in life, I was just throwing change at the bottom of my purse and these kids were running to me and I was giving them dollars and, and, and dollars and five dollars and just giving them dollars and I didn't have any more dollars and and I was people were behind me and trying to rush me into the bus, but these kids were screaming, Mom, please, please. So as I'm walking backwards up into the bus, I flipped my purse over and, and just on the streets and the people were still behind me and all my change just came pouring out and all the kids just came in front of the bus because I still had some change and I didn't want to leave with that change knowing that I just couldn't, I just couldn't leave those kids in that shape if there was something I could do to help them. When we are obedient to God, doing what he tells us to do, when we resist gaining treasures from ill-gotten pursuits, when we resist refraining from cheating folk, we know when we're cheating folk, something just clicks in our heart and we know we're cheating folk, okay? When we lend and not borrow, beg or steal, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread or even looking like I'm begging, I ain't gonna do it. If we save some of our wealth for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren for the inevitable things to come, and I'm not gonna, and I'm not talking about that new, necessarily that new Mercedes Benz that's out. I'm not talking about out for ourselves in that way. I'm talking about for the things that are inevitable, the, the sunshine and the rain, the, the life and the death. Okay, those things. And if we share our assets with our harvest with others, then our assets will be protected and we will, we will prosper. So in short, what God is doing is he's telling us to be obedient, and fair lenders, savers, and sharers. Like a bank, God wants us to be part of the Fair Lending Act. He wants us to be fair lenders. Like a bank, God wants us to have savings account that's going to get us gain us interest. And like a bank, God wants us to share with others and, and get a return, always get a return, some kind of return. Whether we're giving to others, we're still getting a return on our investment because the word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good messenger, press down, running together, shaking over, it'll be given. So whether you give, whether you save, Save and not just store, but store to, to get more. So uh, whether you give, whether you share, whether you get it back, God wants you to protect your assets so you can always be pr prosperous. And where you fall short, you can go to this book where there's a wealth of information and exercises and check yourself before you wreck yourself and make sure that you are protecting your assets I have included an asset protection checklist in here with some biblical scriptures for you to check yourself and also for you to notate any changes that you might need to do in your life in order for you to pass the 
asset protection test. The changes in the area of your obedience, ill-gotten gain, debt, savings, and sharing. Remember, God wants you to be a bank. He wants us to be a bank. He wants us to be a funnel where his blessings can pour through so that we can be a blessings for generations to come. So protect your assets so you too can be a blessing for generations to come. God bless you. I'm Jacqueline Lawrence, author of Prosperity Planning God's Way. Don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe button, leave any comments that you may have, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless you. Bye-bye.